Today we're just looking at leaf texture, and texture defined, or defined as the width of the leaf blade. And I've given four different grass samples to illustrate uh, leaf texture. Here, where the pointer is, is a fine fescue. And what's noted as we go out and try to identify grasses, and once again as we go across or walk across a property, we can look at uh, leaf texture, and this is dealing with the width of the leaf blade. So we have uh, different grasses having different types of leaf texture. Over here we have the fine fescues, and the fine fescues are noted to be very uh, fine leaf texture, normally dealing with about a millimeter in, in leaf width. Uh, some people refer to, to kind of needle-like with regards to how fine the leaf blade is. Uh, this sample right here next to the fine fescue is a, a bent grass. It's a, a creepy bent grass that was grown at a relatively high mowing height. And if we measure the leaf width, of the creepy bent grass will probably be about two millimeters, maybe going on three. Things like Kentucky bluegrass, rye grasses, and, and bent grasses may see leaf widths that can be two to three millimeters, depending on the cultivar and, and the mowing height. So that we're considered this to be more of a medium uh, leaf texture, where the uh, fine fescue is considered to be a fine texture turf grass. Over here, on my left, I guess on your right, is a tall fescue sample and a crabgrass sample. And these are considered to be coarse textured grasses, meaning that if we measure the width of the leaf blade, that we're going to be probably about five millimeters or, or greater. I think I just measured the tall fescue, it's about five millimeters. If I take a look at the, the crabgrass plant, it's about you know, six or seven millimeters. Texture can be important in helping to identify turf grasses, and it also is important when we're trying to mix and blend uh, different uh, species, whether uh, we would see a noticeable difference uh, when we begin uh, to mix, let's say, a fine fescue with tall fescue, we would find quite a bit of uh, difference with regards uh, to, to texture and it would really stand out on a turf grass uh, site. Looking at uh, turf grasses, just some of the basic uh, structures and characteristics. Uh, here, uh, turf grasses will have a fibrous root system. That fibrous root system is important in tying the plant down, anchoring it down. Uh, therefore, it can be played upon, walked upon, and not be uh, pulled up. Um, other important characteristics of a good fibrous root system is that it uh, you know, provides for uh, moisture and, and nutrient uptake. Uh, so as we have a deeper rooted uh, turf grass plant, it has the ability to absorb uh, nutrients and water. Uh, turf grasses, uh, you know, also having this fibrous root system allow uh, the soil to be tied down and stabilizes the soil. Uh, good root growth would be indicative of white roots. Uh, you can see here there's a number of new uh, root growth that's occurring, and this happens to be a weedy type plant, which is a foxtail, but once again, very fibrous root system. Uh, from this point up is considered to be the shoot system of which uh, things such as our leaves, the leaf blade sheath, uh, various types of stem tissue I'm seeing starting to develop um, would be present on the uh, shoot system. And once again, this is important uh, where the plant uh, is going to be producing carbohydrates through the process of photosynthesis. And then ultimately, uh, these carbohydrates could be moved down into roots or, say, lower stem tissue, depending on the turf grass plant. Um, this foxtail plant is beginning to flower part of a, a plant, and, and, and turf grasses may flower at different time periods of the year. A lot of our cool season grasses flower towards the spring and fall, where a lot of our uh, warm season grasses will uh, produce a flower uh, as we go through the summer period. Uh, any other time period, when we're trying to identify grasses, we're really looking at uh, vegetative characteristics. If they are in flower producing inflorescence, the inflorescence can be important and identifying the turf grass. For turf grass identification, trying to look at different vegetative characteristics, and the leaf blade is an important uh, to look at and certain characteristics of the leaf in, in attempting to identify uh, turf grasses. So uh, when we take a look at really the shoot system, much of the shoot system will consist of leaves. And when we look at a turf grass plant, the leaf is actually consisting of two parts. It's, and I'm going to pull back one. This happens to be a tall fescue sample. I'm going to pull back a leaf here. And so this particular leaf really consists of two parts.
parts. One would be the, the blade, which starts about here. And it's really uh, an area of uh, differentiation, which is uh, known as a ligule on the inside portion of the, uh, of the leaf. And then as I go from here down is the sheath. And it's really the sheath that is going to be connected down to the crown tissue when we, when we look at that. Okay, so this is a tall fescue plant. And, and we once again would have the blade and the sheath. Uh, probably the other thing when we look at some of the turf grasses, I don't know if you can you know, maybe take a look at this, but even in, in identifying like a tall fescue, what to me is very characteristic is the, a lot of the veins that are present on the leaf blade. Um, the other thing too is that as these leaves emerge, the youngest leaves are emerging from the center of the plant, and there's a term called vernation. And vernation refers to whether the leaves are going to be rolled as they emerge or whether they're folded. And, and so those are the two choices when we're looking at uh, leaf vernation. So the tall fescue, if I take a look at the youngest leaf and I see how this is rolled as it emerges, this would be referred to as a rolled leaf vernation. Uh, things like Kentucky bluegrass, rye grasses, uh, if we look at the youngest leaf, it tends to be folded. Another example I have would be uh, some orchard grass that would be a folded leaf formation. If I look here on a little bit larger sample, down in this area where the blade and the sheath connect on the inside is known as uh, a ligule. And depending on the turf grass, it may vary from an onion skin type consistency, which would be referred to as a membranous ligule. Some might be very short, they may not be that noticeable. Uh, if I look on the back side, it's referred to as the collar. So if I turn this up, this is referred to as the collar area on the back side of, of a leaf. Also, they might have short projections that may extend out. And usually with tall fescue, you may see these what we call oracles or very short, stubby, finger like type projections that come out. Uh, certain grasses don't have any oracles whatsoever. Others may have very long clasping oracles, but it's this area right at the uh, ligule, at the sides of the collar, where this can extend out and can help you in identifying grasses. Uh, this other example that I have here is a um, orchard grass plant, and it's kind of a coarse textured grass that we see sometimes in various lawn situations. But I wanted to pull back and have you look at the ligule. So when I pull back, what's noted about, say, the orchard grass plant is the presence of this ligule. And once again, this is sort of a, a membranous ligule, a kind of an onion skin kind of consistency to it. I'm not sure if you can get a good view of that, but right once again, this would be the ligule. Uh, things like Bermuda grasses, for example, and zoysia grasses would have more of a hairy type of ligule. So when you were looking at uh, the ligule, we want to look at this part of the plant for identification. I guess the other thing too about the orchard grass plant is that as this newest leaf emerges, it's actually folded over. And so this, an example, would be a plant that would have a folded leaf renation. And the last grass sample that I wanted to show you is another weedy type grass. It's um, a foxtail. And it's kind of coarse textured grass. Uh, but if I pull back one and try to see if I can take a look at the ligule, what you're going to find here is that the ligule tends to be uh, sort of serrated, uh, almost like it's been shredded. And then at the very base, it, it comes to, uh, together kind of more, almost like a membranous ligule at the base. So we, we can see a lot of uh, differences in ligules that can help you in identification of, of your grasses.